here on January 3rd, 2024, a regular meeting giving public schools ISD 701. It's 3.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That being said, we'll go to item two. Pledge of Allegiance, please stand if you wish. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay, with that, we'll move to item three. It's the reorganization of the school board required by state statute to occur the first Monday or most practical, practicable date before the passing. So we can do that one of a couple ways. We can either make it and go, everybody wants it to stay the same, we could do that. Otherwise, we will. Chair, clerk, greater, both and accepted for the committee's I'm fine with the how it is. I'm fine with how it is. I'm fine with how it is. Okay. Unless okay. Sarah, are you okay? So, therefore, I'd look for a motion to start the year off with the same school board we had last year. And we'll read the names just to the public. So is there a motion to accept it? I'll make a motion that the offices <coughs> for the 24 year remain the same. I'll second. Motion and second is. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. I want to thank you. That's the first time in my 28 years it's said. <laughs> really? Yeah. I thought we did. I thought we did. I thought we did one change last time. I think we did. Yeah. We did. I think right. I had something in or whatever. So this is your name? Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, because I changed last time. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, Director Berklitz will be the chair. Director Colch will be the clerk. Director Glock will be the treasurer. And Director Nyberg is the chair pro tem. Right? Next is a resolution for blank bond <coughs> resolved at the school board of ISD 701 that the district purchased a blanket bond for $100,000 to cover the board members and school employees. Hold move. Support. Moved by Director Bolter, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. For the same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is in regards to the salaries of the board members <coughs> resolved by the school board of giving that the salaries of the school board members will be $400 per month payable monthly for regularly scheduled board meetings. The chairperson of the school board shall receive $450 per month payable monthly for regularly scheduled school board meetings and $50 per month shall be allowed for additional negotiation meetings and special meetings beginning with the 2023-2024 contract. Support. Board Director Nyberg, Board Director Coulter. <coughs> Any discussion? Is it, Go ahead. Chair, is this an increase from last year? We increased it last January. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next so week. it's not an increase. No, no, no. Is, no. is the answer. Yes. <laughs> Just so the public understands. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is the official newspaper. Uh, for the school board of ISD 701 that the Saudi Tribune shall be designated the official newspaper of the school district to publish the proceedings of the meetings of the school board and legal notices and display advertising at the legal rate. The officers are authorized to enter into contract for the same. So moved. So far. Moved by Director McLaughlin, supported by Director Nyberg. Any discussion? Wonderful. Go ahead. Ladies first. I would just like to comment that there were quotes that were provided, and actually the Wasabi Tribune came in less than hometown focus. And you know, I don't know if Marie is here, but I just want to give a shout out to Marie because I think in the last year, since she started covering our meetings, we it's it's improved it's a lot. Yes. Yeah. So, and I think she does a nice job yep. writing articles. Yes. Next is a resolution regarding the dates and times of school board meetings. 
the board of ISD 7 no more giving at the regular school board, scheduled school board meeting will be held on the first Wednesday after the first Monday of each month unless otherwise designated. The second meeting will be held two weeks after the first meeting unless that day is a legal holiday. When it will be held the next day when legal business can be transacted unless otherwise designated. The starting time will be 3.30 p.m. and the place will be the boardroom at the giving high school unless otherwise designated. I'm over. Sure, I'll support. Have we said that it any further discussion? Any discussion? You know what? I have a discussion and it doesn't relate to the time, but it relates to meetings. So I don't know if it's after we vote on this. So if you want me to... the only thing I would like to do is at our December 4th and 2024 meeting, our truth of taxation, if there's any way that we can schedule it. So it's not at the same time on the same date as the city's truth and taxation. I would like us to coordinate that. So if taxpayers want to come to both of the meetings, they can do that without feeling like they have to pick one or the other. Well, we can do that. Yeah. That's just any time after right. six o'clock, right? So we can. We make it Thursday or whatever. That's all I'm saying. So we don't make <coughs> it. So we don't get to December. And we there was a lot of problems in this year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so with this. That being said, if we can change these any time, it's just a formality for right now. We have to change them. It's not a problem. That was it. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same thing. Aye. Aye. Same sign. Aye. Is that opposed? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, same as last year. Yeah. Like the the Let the minutes show. Oops. Next is the resolution um, with regard to payment of certain claims um, by the school board of ISD 701 that the business manager shall be authorized to prepay certain claims to take advantage of discounts. So moved. Support. Moved by Director Neighbor, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is a resolution for electronic fund transfers. Uh, the school board of ISD 701 that the business manager shall be authorized to make payment through the use of electronic fund transfers and shall report the same to the school board each month. So moved. Support. Moved by Director Gabardi, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The following are two resolutions to appoint. Uh, members to committees. Uh, the first is the Minnesota State High School League. Can you say who it currently is on all these? Yes. It's me. It's <laughs> oh, that's me. Oh. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll do it again. I didn't do it too much. No. I, I, we didn't have hearings or anything this year for any students or maybe one, actually. Yeah. Is there a motion for food? Almost. So moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is an appointment to the MSPA. I'm all to for Director Berkeley. Yeah. Is there a second? Support. Motion made by Director Nyberg, seconded by Director Gabardi. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Motion. Aye. Oh, same sign. Motion carried. Thank yeah. you. Next is an appointment to the Title I Parent Advisory Committee. Yes, Director Gabardi. Correct. I'll make a motion to nominate um, Director Gabardi. Support. Moved by Director Niver, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any further discussion? We should ask if you want to continue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same ones. Yeah. Well, that's right. I don't okay. want to try to rush you through before she had a chance. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. <laughs> Just trying to get through it all. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is an appointment to the Community Ed Advisory Council. That is Director Niver. And I would, I'll do it again. Support. Moved by Director Gordy, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is an appointment to the Religious Release Committee. Currently, Director Me. Yeah. 
I'll make a motion that Chair Berkowitz continue on the Religious Ed Committee. I'll second that. Motion made by Director McLaughlin and seconded by Director Poulter. And a couple of weeks ago, I did check into that again. Do we need this committee? I mean, why do we, why do we have this? In case, say, a priest, a pastor, or somebody from one of the denominations wanted to call up and ask somebody, I guess I'd be the go between them. Yeah, well, won't they work with the superintendent? And, and they have, I suppose. <laughs> maybe if I said no to something and they would like, or yet, or, or disagree, and then maybe. Yeah. 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 I, 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 just no think, I think that's a committee that should be dissolved. I agree. It's, it's ridiculous. There was a time when. There, there was, was a time, time we had buses went, of it, yeah. And now you've got a couple. Yeah. Right. Well, that a was handful. when they wanted just release two stuff. Mm. And of course, we're going to release the kids that want to go. Yeah. But it's just not a big deal know. anymore. Do you have a need for anything? Telephone calls are probably two or three in 20 years. Yeah. So. Is there, when can we dissolve this? Right now, we want to. Yes. Oh, I'll make a motion to dissolve the religious release committee. I'll second that. And for discussion, if something comes up, we have to do it again. Like, like the volunteers. But we had a motion on the floor in a second. Should we like oh. vote that and then vote to whatever? No, we didn't even vote on it. No, we have a motion in a second. Oh, so we have to vote on it. I don't know. You can withdraw the yeah, first okay. motion. I'll withdraw and my this, motion. And this is a vote for the second motion. So, all in favor, quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Say aye. 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 The floor is same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> this is why we want to run the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. None of us want to do it, John. Next is an appointment to the District Health and Safety Committee, uh, currently held by I've been on that for like several years and there's never been a meeting. There, there is a requirement that we have a okay. committee and if an issue comes forward, so okay. um, there is a, a state requirement that okay. we have a... That's fine. Yeah. Do we have a committee? Oh. Mr. Poulter, and then it would be Tyler, if Tyler has to, you know, a lot of that happens in house. We have some yeah. teacher representatives and different AFSCME representatives on safety committees and a lot of that happens in house, but if something were to come to a board level, I think that's. So we do have a safety committee. We, we do. We yeah. have to have. Yes. I yeah. mean, what is who's on it? Like Tyler. It's Tyler I mean, and, and reps from each do building. Do they meet regularly or not really? They meet a couple times a year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When I was on there, we met at least a quarter of you. Sometimes more. Every school we do do it with Joe Arthur's. Then when Tyler got on. Just the last couple of years of Joel, we didn't do anything either with I mean, it seems super important. Like, that would be a super important committee with that should be really active. Yep. I don't know. I, well, items get brought um, to Tyler, and then he, he keeps a running list. They have a meeting. They address all the safety concerns. I know he does it, yeah. 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 No, I mean, safety in different contexts, would this also now include the things that are happening now that we don't have an RSO? Or is that safety part not coming into play here? It, it potentially could. I mean, if uh, you know, if a high school teacher felt you know there was an issue with with a door, or you know, maybe kids were getting in and out of the building, you know, during the middle of the day, that's something we'd bring forward. We'd maybe we change locks. Maybe we. Um, you know, I have. There's a couple of teacher reps here, and I know I don't want to put it on the spot, but I know Mr. Sanders sometimes works with. Tyler in particular with the science lab and the health and safety. Am I describing this correct, Mr. Sanders? Do you meet a couple times a year and bring your concerns forward, or is that not correct? Last time I was on the safety committee was in the 1990s. Okay, so that <laughs> example. Well, that's fine. No, okay. uh, Mr. Erickson is the, the chemical safety officer. Okay, okay. So and, that, and then he works with Tyler and with IEA and they work correct. through them. It, it is just, a requirement that we have a health and safety committee. Yeah. I do know that. <laughs> it just strikes me that in a big district like this with all these buildings and all these safety issues, right. I mean, it's not just one safety issue. It's right. the science labs. It's the doors. Right. It's fire. It's everything. Right. I mean, there's just so much safety. Yeah, maybe we can talk to Tyler about yeah, give that more. Maybe well, what, twice a year. Give him an update again. What, yeah. what he does and how he yeah, works to the process. Nice, I could get that. Yeah. Or when the meetings yeah. ever come. Uh, or with Mr. The Mr. Chair, I wonder if it, 
Mrs. Nyberg, I think this might be a really good idea. Yeah. May I just put forward? Yeah. If it was a scheduled meeting where but, yeah. minutes were taken, right. it might be nice to have that to fall back upon for the district. Yeah. Yes. And you could ask for volunteers, so those that would be interested. I'm not meaning to supersede, <laughs> just making a, a no. suggestion no, thought. A good suggest I know when I worked at the college at HCC, there was always a safety committee and it had reps from all the different areas and they went over their agenda and had minutes. And was it was very active. I was on a safety committee at the call before. Yeah. Well, maybe even to start with, like kind of like the world's best workforce, whereas school board reps were informed of what the meeting is so we can attend. Mm -hmm. Maybe when they have their couple semi-annual yeah. meetings, if you're informed, yep. then you can attend, attend or get reports, if they said reports from IEA. Yeah. I, I'll give, I'll, I'll send you a little update on the process and where we're at and, okay. and if it needs to be fine-tuned and, and mm -hmm. brought up to a higher level, we can certainly do that. But well, I know they meet, he may even have minutes. I, I'm not insinuating it's not happening, yeah. but it would be better, I think, if it's more of a formal thing. I agree. We should yeah. have an official. <laughs> On the flip side, I think we have to be careful when it's safety and security, right? Like, that's like stuff that we don't want to say it's non public where we cannot talk about it at a public meeting for obvious reasons, right? So we have to be careful how much gets talked about here. On some topics. Yeah, because we can't, ex our vulnerabilities we want to talk about. I'll make sure you're informed when they're meeting and then I'll also send an update to the board on what the process is and what it looks like and if we have to Maybe amp it up to it. Yeah. Yeah. Make the proper changes. Yep. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same thought sign. Motion carries. Was there was there a motion or a second? I'll make a motion to I'll second. No there is. <laughs> it's a new year. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right, uh, next is an appointment to the world's best workforce currently held by Director McLaughlin and Director Gabbard. Do you both want to do it? I have a yeah. second. I will too. I'll make a motion to nominate Directors McLaughlin and Gabbard to Chair the world's also, best workforce. Chair will support. It's been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is an appointment to the negotiations committee. Uh, do not refer that last year. It, it has been um, Director McLaughlin and Chair Berklich. Um, and we always, at the time of negotiations, just kind of sort that up and make sure that that's the direction we're going. We're not negotiating this year, hopefully. <laughs> I think we're done for now, so um, that, that's up to the board. If you'd like to throw that in, there, there could be other items that come up. There could be strategy items that come up throughout the year that might be nice to have that committee named and have it as it currently is represented. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next is Director McLaughlin and Director DeBorty. No, no, not me. It, it was, it was, yes. Oh, that was for the, that's the final. This is for negotiations. I do think it should be the chair, for sure. Yes. I, I'm not interested. I'm not a good person for that. I, <laughs> I'm not a good negotiator. If you don't want it, I would do it. I oh, I would absolutely, absolutely stay on it. I think, and as the treasurer, I think it's a good combination. Okay. Unless... Director Poulter and Director Glaffin, they can be an alternate. Or sure. As needed. Sure. Something like that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. But you, don't you want to be part of it since you're the chair? Or yeah. yeah. But there's two different things here. One is the uh, negotiating committees, which isn't there. This is just the finance committee. No, no, no. Last year we didn't. We didn't assign the specific. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we this over here. And it currently is you. And Kim, I don't believe the board took action, I think. 
board nominated you at a later meeting before we negotiated. Yeah, so what, what do we have? Uh, three of us on there, or two, or, well, like I said. We can have up to three. Okay, then I nominate Ken and Director Fulcher and Director Berkeley. So moved. In motion, moved by, seconded by Director Barney. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Don't see him sign. Motion period. Thank you. This is an appointment to the Chemical Health Advisory Council. Is that still active? I don't believe we um, I don't think it is. Okay. You want to move away with the other I, I believe we could, yes. We'll make a motion to move away with the Chemical Health Advisory Council. I'll second. And move by Director Fulcher. <laughs> Excuse me, seconded by Director Hyper. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. The motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next is appointment to the AD Athletic Department Committee. So, M Mr. Turner had, had asked to establish this committee and have board representation this year, and I believe he's already asked a couple of board members if they'd like to serve on this committee. To play yeah. Director yeah. Gabardi and, yeah. and uh, Director Nyberg. So, if they're willing to do that, I think mm -hmm. we'll just take a nomination from the board. I'll make a motion to nominate Director Gabardi and Director Nyberg to the AD committee. Chair will support. It's been moved and supported. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carried. Thank you. And then last is an appointment to the Finance Committee currently held by Director Gabardi and Director Lawson. I'll just leave that one back here. Negotiation. This is finance committee. That's where, and I got two different pages here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to stay on. And you served as an alternate on that too, yeah. Chair Berkowitz, if you were interested. Okay, the chair will make a motion. I'll support. Move by Director Poulter. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. I do have just a question in general. Is so Director Egan is not on any of these? Does do we have to disperse them to everybody or no? According to the last year's it wasn't like we no, he just made the motions. He wasn't there. I don't think he wanted to do that. No, okay. He didn't make think. Of course that choice. Sure. Has anybody heard from him? He's Interested in becoming committees? Like he never got picked off the last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just would hate to him not have to pick it, that's all. Mm -hmm. Well, and if he is interested in being on a committee later, can we just we can bring, him on? bring it up at the sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, is that everything? Yeah, I knew things were going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, we'll move to item four. Motion to approve the agenda. I'll move. Support. Moved by Director Poulter, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. With that, we'll move to item five. The motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll move. Chair will support. Moved by Director Poulter, supported by Chair Burkage. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, we do we do have one item to remove, item D, from the consent agenda. We're not ready to bring that recommendation forward today. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Are we doing it this way now where we don't do them separate, we do it all at one? Yeah. Did we decide that? Yeah. I don't remember deciding that, but okay. We said we can change it anything. Oh, okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Full the same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Yeah, Director Library. We said you see something in advance or whatever you want. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Item six, public comment. Never see none, Mr. Chair. That will move to item seven, administrative reports. We'll start with the student director, Christian. 
talk about nothing. Directors? I, I have something real quick. Um, plans continue for the 100th celebration, 100th anniversary celebration of the high school. And I have, we have confirmed some auditorium acts. So, you know, happy to report we've got some really good, exciting things that we're going to be presenting that week of July 6th to the 13th. So, I don't, I, I don't think I'm going to give the names right now. But I will, once we firm it all up. That's good. Keep, 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 yeah. keep asking me things you want. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, they're going well. Um, three of the, <coughs> well, all of the acts that I've helped to arrange are alumni. So that's kind of neat that we're going to hear alumni perform and sing and do their thing on the stage. So that'll be good. And then the band and choir have agreed to do a joint performance, our HHS band and choir. So that'll be really exciting, and they're going to be in the aisles and in their um, new uniforms, hopefully, in the band. Yeah. And then uh, as far as involving alumni in the choir or band performance, that's kind of been left up to Matt Berg and Will Sakura. So that, that could come together, too, where we'd have alumni in that performance also. But that's up in the air right now. Is so, your group growing? Is what? Is your group growing? Um, no, but we have a good core, you know, about 10 people, I'd say, come to the meetings, monthly meetings. Would we say, Kathy? Mm -hmm. At least. About yeah. 10, 12. Yeah. So it's, it's going well. Did you want to add? No, I was just going to say, did you share with Chair Berkeley that he's going to be giving the opening remarks? At the no, I didn't. As a chair of the board. <laughs> no, it's been going well, I think, and yeah. and I, I think when we first started, there were a lot of people because they thought it was going to be like all class reunion, yeah. and I think we've really paired it back to um, meaningful, manageable contents that focus around the high school and our school district. So yeah. I think it's going well. Yeah, we're gonna well tell them what you did with the education, history of education. Oh, we may have a speaker. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Mary Keys, and I just got off the phone with her, is going to, she's got a couple of options, but speaking about the history of education on the higher range, which I think is about a 45 minute presentation, and she's going to do a second one um, also on, like, primarily the history of the auditorium, but that includes a little bit of hitting, hitting high school in the auditorium. So if people don't want to do like a tour, so we just need to figure out how we want to slot it in. But mm -hmm. she's done those other places, so she does a nice job. Well, maybe I will. I'm excited. So maybe I will say who, who else. Okay, so it's Will Dury has agreed. He's a kind of a recent graduate. He's going to perform. Um, Jill Burks with her group Morning Bird. She's, I don't know, early 2000 grad maybe. 2000. Is, is she okay? And then um, Jimmy Hyde, who played with the Eddie Rabbit Band, he's getting his all his old band members: um, Jimmy Hyde, Terry Miller, Joe Gibbon, and Louis Murray. They're all gonna they're gonna put on a big performance. I'm really excited about that one he, because he was big he was big time musician. Jimmy Hyde was so, and they're all along. So very exciting. And then we've got some other. Irons on the fire, we're working with some other people too. So, yeah. So it's going to be exciting. Good. That sounds yes. good, Barry. Yes. Well, thank you. For Any other items? Speaking of the band, did, does anybody know? I stopped into the band room, but there were some students in there. Do we know if they hit their target for the first of the year? I don't. I don't. I saw today that there was a, a donation. Thank you. That was posted on Facebook, mm -hmm. but and they said on that post it was their first yeah, well, donation. I didn't understand that. I didn't either, but yeah. first, so first, first donation. donation. Yeah. First donation. Yeah. Okay. With that, we'll move to MC committee reports for administration. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. We've got Mr. I believe Mr. Turner here. Are you are you prepared, Mr. Turner? I know you're in, you came in late, but he was in Duluth all day for scheduling stuff. But. 
No, I was just running from the loop, so. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, but no, I got back. So, I, yeah, I'm not really prepared, so if you have any questions for me. Uh, winter is off to a great start. Uh, as you just voted on, I wanted to start that AD committee. And what that committee is going to consist of is we're going to meet three to four times a year. It will be updates on any rule changes or anything within the Minnesota High School League that affects our student athletes and our coaches that uh, we'll be able to talk about it and then communicate it not only at this meeting but in our community too. So I uh, learned about that sort, sort of committee from some of the other ADs around the Iron Range and the Twin Ports. So I wanted to uh, put that in place. Uh, something else, um, I just got back from Orlando uh, and I was at the National AD's convention. Got a lot of good insight on some things that we should be doing within our athletics and our performing arts uh, that we're not doing right now that I hope to put in place uh, within the next coming year. Uh, what else? Had a little bit of a health scare, but uh, back on track. Ended up in ICU on a ventilator for 24 hours. But uh, hey, we're still standing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, <clears throat> as far as winter sports, our girls and boys basketball team are off to a pretty good start. Uh, boys hockey had a really good uh, holiday tournament, finishing third in the uh, Herb Brooks Classic. Uh, girls not so uh, well down at uh, Kaposha, finished in last place but competed well and uh, just got a win last night uh, down in Duluth. Um, swimming, so-so, our numbers are a little bit down in boys swimming uh, but hoping they'll bounce back here in the next uh, couple of years. So just looking at some of those younger swimmers that are coming in, uh, thanks to uh, Alex and Kirk for our uh, community swim. We got a lot of young people swimming in that right now and hopefully that will turn over to uh, some of our varsity and uh, B, B squat swimming. And right now working on uh, spring sports and it looks like we'll be able to get outside if it, the weather stays like it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to stay. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm hoping we don't get any snow. We'll get snow in April. Yeah, yeah that'll be it and we'll be pushing everything back. Yeah. Other than that, uh, yeah. Oh, and we're going to be hosting a lot of tournaments again here uh, coming up this winter. I can't believe I'm already talking about Section Alpine Ski within a month. So February 6th we'll be hosting that out at Giants Ridge. And then we'll have also Section Single A Voice Basketball at the Memorial. So all that stuff is coming really fast. So, yeah. Any questions that you have of me? And I apologize for being late. I was talking to Trina and Rick and telling them <laughs> where I was at. <laughs> so. Thank you. Can you share anything more about the good ideas that came out of the national convention that you're so, going to try or not? Yeah, so uh, one thing that I really want to look at is something that uh, a couple of the schools in Illinois do. Uh, they have uh, uh, coaching clinics for their head coaches and really try to have a toolage of what practice looks like, what game management looks like, and being able to serve uh, your assistant coaches better by giving them more responsibility. So I'm hoping to implement that here uh, this spring and late uh, summer. So uh, I just think that's something that we should be doing for our head coaches is giving them an opportunity to grow and then help their assistants grow. And hopefully that'll turn over into us not looking for a ton of coaches in the future. Our younger coaches will become the head coaches for our varsity sports as people step down and retire. So that's one. And then yeah. really trying to build our leadership group uh, from our young people uh, from grades 7 through 12. So. And then you have a committee already on that? Yeah. A group yeah. or whatever? We have a group and just trying to meet with them more often than we do right now. So. Yeah. And what do you, do you talk with them about? Like what? Sometimes we're, right now we're talking about uh, servant leadership and how to be a good leader and what that looks like and, and being a good teammate and what that looks like on and off the court. So.
So that's the kids that are actually on the teams right now mm -hmm. are also part of this leadership. Yep. Yeah. And, it's, and, and it's just not athletics. So again, it's, it's uh, students who may be in choir. Yeah. Uh, and it's, so anybody can nominate a, a student to be a part yeah. of that. And, they, and you don't have to be a 3.0 student. Yeah. You don't have to be on a be on a roll. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. like that idea. I have two questions, um, and I think you and Ms. Sakura were maybe working together on it. But any additional information on um, that class or course about refing for different sports? So that's that's something that uh, Ms. Sakura was talking to me about, and that's with uh, Wojo. Wojciechowski, I always forget his full name, <laughs> but Mr. Wojciechowski would be in charge of that, being able to present that class maybe this spring or the following fall. So, and that, that's something that the state of Minnesota is really pushing for schools to do uh, because we have such a low number of referees. And we were just talking about that at our AD meetings because the, they just came in and talked to us about uh, not only soccer, but football is gonna be really short this fall. And uh, they're worried that we're not going to have referees for games. So, and that is just, it's mind blowing. And, so, and what's the reason? People just don't want to do it. Because of why? A lot of it is uh, one is the abuse that they oh. get from parents and fans. It's okay. And then the other is uh, it's, it's just not, the, the pay is not very good. Is that the pay? I was going to say, yeah. I, for the abuse, yeah. So, <laughs> For the abuse, it's not a good enough pay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you come and do a, a football game uh, for us right now, a varsity football game, we, you you get a hundred dollars. Yeah. And I mean, we it's, haven't it's, had a lot of we haven't had a lot of it. We had a little bit in soccer yeah. where some of our officials have been uh, confronted as they're walking off. But in football, and I think in football it's a little different. Because they can, they, they go out that uh, by the shed down there, yeah. and they're really not by the fans. So we haven't had a lot of it. Uh, but even at the uh, little uh, holiday tournament we had for the girls, I had three young men that were visiting from Bemidji that were just belligerent, and I had to ask them to leave. In, in the crowd, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They were right there on the floor, and it was just like, really, yeah. you're gonna voice that type of opinion when? These guys are making 75 bucks to be here yeah. over the holidays. So, yeah, it's... It's so really that's, a problem. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, sports aren't going to be able to happen if we can't get refs. Well, sports won't be able to happen if we can't get refs. And I think uh, we do our students a disservice. Yeah. And maybe we just say you you can't attend if you're going to be... If you're uh, going to yell. And, yeah. yeah. Well, and you can yell and cheer. Well, you can yell. Yeah. One thing, and you can... You can be passionate about things that are going on, yeah. but it's different when you start uh, being disrespectful not only to the referees but to the kids on the floor. Yeah, right. So that's that's one problem. You had another question, question yeah, for me. Was um, when you talk about that leadership, you know, with the athletes, I've I've noticed um, at some other schools and different sporting events um, that sometimes they'll have a younger athlete you know be announced with them or um, you know the starting lineup or be able to you know sit on the bench with them for part of the game or whatnot to feel more like that do we do any of that or is that really more so left up to each coach and each sport individually because I know we do a lot of things like in between with the young athletes which is fantastic but we haven't, we haven't, and I, that would be left up to a lot of the coaches. And, and I, I would say that sometimes uh, folks don't communicate to me a lot of things that are going on in between the game, and that's just a little frustrating because it is. We Sometimes we, we are on a time schedule when you talk about how much time you have for halftime, how much time you have between warm-ups. It is, it, is, it is all scripted uh, from the Minnesota High School League and game management uh, that we have to follow. So, uh, but... Uh, yeah, that is a good idea to have some of those young athletes to be able to model some of the behavior that our older athletes are doing. Some of the behavior. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like at Hibbing High School in our programs, at least basketball, for a period of time they used to, but I felt like that was up to the coach yeah. to kind of arrange. So I think that's some of our, our like, uh, I know they perform sometimes at halftime, 
uh, our youth, or like our elementary programs. Uh, we don't do a lot of that in hockey, uh, so I haven't seen that with between I think Pete. The mini mics come out. The yeah, they'll skate a little bit, and they'll they'll form a tunnel for them. Yeah. But there's not a lot of skating and stuff during between periods. We do have our uh, our hibbing skaters, uh, figure skaters, and Chisholm. They'll be performing here at some of our games here at halftime. So yeah, that's coming up. I'm learning a lot about hockey and figure skating. So. <laughs> you better. Yeah, yeah. I you're can't you're skate. You're no. I can't skate, but I can't stop. So, <laughs> uh, anything else? How is yeah. the whole um, kind of organization or reorganization by having Travis Bakke helping with the lower level stuff? I, I we actually we're meeting again tomorrow morning. I. There's there's some good and there's some not so good I guess you would say. Uh, there's a couple of things that I was going to reach out to Mr. Aldridge about that I don't think I need to bring up here, but that uh, we should probably look at uh, okay. moving in the future. And and I and I say that because I I'd like us to do a little more things in house. And I was just going to approach him about that. So. But I have, I've enjoyed working with Mr. Maki, so it's, it's nothing. So, yeah. Very good, thank you. So Mr. Mrs. McDonald was following me? No, it was Mr. Oh. Mr. Lutzka, but he oh. uh, was not here this afternoon, so I was going to say that's a hard act. <laughs> so no more. Thank, thank you, any, Mr. Turner. No, thank any you. committee reports? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Item A is a motion to approve the resolution to accept donations. I move. Well, support. Move by Director Volker, support by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Is there? Yeah, I have a question. On here, uh, to accept the gift of $2,500 from the Girls Basketball Club to support the whole subscription. I'm thinking that we get money from our booster clubs fairly regularly, whether it's for transportation or whether it's for uniforms or whether equipment. Mm -hmm. So will we see all of those on our donations and start accepting all of them? Or is, is this like unique or, or I guess? That's a good question. Because they've always supported charter buses and stuff, mm -hmm. and they've never been on the like donation list. I think they just pay those directly. Mm -hmm. I think it comes through you. It does go through you, doesn't it? Uh, we rebuild that for. Yeah, and maybe I understood how to put that in. Maybe it's not a donation, and when I get the list. Yeah. Kind of no, I mean, like, no. and I think this is okay, and I think it opens up good conversation because truly they are donations mm -hmm. that we get to the district. To the district. Yeah. And maybe we don't need it every meeting, but maybe at the end of each season or something, each booster club, or we could get a report that shows what each booster club is contributing to. That's a great idea. Didn't the auditor have something like that? I thought we asked her almost the same question. Yes, and, and she had a conversation we had about booster clubs. She did give me an answer. I just didn't get it <coughs> distributed to the board yet. No, oh, we'll give that tomorrow. So, maybe so we'll if it's, is it usually the charter buses, or what was this one for? This is for a huddle subscription. I think that's, what is that? The that's the like, select like stream. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And <coughs> to your question, I mean, if there's one coming from the, the boys, It'll, I think it'll be on here. It's just a matter of we haven't got it yet. Or, so I, I was just going to say I could speak to that. So the huddle subscription is uh, what we did is uh, before every team was like uh, doing something different uh, to make sure that they could stream their games or do something. And with huddle, we were able to put together what they call an AD package. It was a lot cheaper for each team. Uh, to come together and do it as one and, and do the AD package and that's why you're seeing uh, the clubs 
committed to being able to pay for it and then we're paying for it one time only and then it's coming from the different booster clubs so oh, then nice. they're not they're not doing because I think boys basketball was paying almost four grand okay. and now theirs is down to I think like 2,500 yeah but they're getting all of the same things that they were getting before well so that's good so then maybe it should be combined in some way for us to see or to I don't know I just think to well, we are, if they are donations back to the school, yeah. right? I mean, that these clubs are doing, some some to a larger extent than others. But maybe just to accept the gifts at the end of each season or something. Because there are other groups besides girls basketball that are out generating funds. Okay, so then boys basketball sounds like we'll be giving 2500 also. And I assume they haven't done that quite yet. Either it was on the previous one or it's probably it's, I think they've already given their check I think I've turned it in already oh, okay. yeah. I think the so boys it's been on the last time's donation we'll double check that but yeah I can check that yeah but they yeah those checks I think most of those checks are in and then you'll see checks coming from track uh, boys and girls track in the spring uh, and the same with football so football's camera didn't get set up we have it but it wasn't set up because we didn't have the Wi-Fi out there uh, at the football field so you'll see a donation from them in the fall okay. and for uh, boys and girls soccer. What about hockey? Hockey, uh, we, we couldn't put the camera in the Memorial Building. Oh. So they were doing something else different over there. Okay. So we didn't do uh, through boys and girls hockey and we're working on doing swimming. Okay. So. But maybe that's something we can come up with a process because I would want to make a ton of work for the office. No. But I think it'd be nice periodically to get a report and accept all the funds that all the booster clubs are contributing. So Maybe quarterly would work. Yeah, <coughs> quarterly because of different sports and yeah. different things. And, yeah, and however Alex and his group can get that most yeah. efficient. And it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't have to be often. Quarterly would be perfect. Yeah, really. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Thank you. Good question, good discussion. Just read the rest of these very quickly. We have $25 for basketball for the uh, Hoops Club to support another subscription. $2,500 from Ben Owens Family Foundation to support a purchase of a welder for students in the industrial arts. $400 from Victoria Jacob Hagler to support the Gay Strain Alliance Club. $100 from Winseth Smith Nolting and Association to support Lego Robotics. $100 from Jasper Engineering to support Lego Robotics. $100 from L&M Radiator to support LEGO Robotics, and $2,000 from AMFA to support LEGO Robotics. Is there a motion to accept the donations? I'll make a motion. Important. Motion made by Director Iber, supported by Director Poulter. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item B is a motion to approve a resolution to allow school board members to be covered by the school district workers' compensation insurance policy. All moved. Support. Moved by Director Poulter, supported by Director Lawton. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C is a motion to approve the corporate re authorization resolutions for <coughs> school district depositories, including Park State Bank, Minnesota Liquid Asset Fund. PMA Financial Network, Robert W. Baer and Company, Security State Bank and Giving, U.S. Bank and Giving, and Wells Fargo Bank. Come on. Support. By Director McGuardy, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Item D, there's an amendment here. Um, it's no longer Rupp, Anderson, Squires, and Waltzberger. It's Waltzberger, Anderson, and Mace. So it's a motion to appoint the following as school district legal counsel for the 2024 calendar year. Waltzberger, Anderson, and Mace, PA, Colossal, Patch, and Kearney, and Brunfeld, LTD, and Freiberger, Buchanan, Smith, and Frederick, PA. So many. Support. Moved by Director of the Office, supported by Director Culture. Any discussion? 
Curry's done. All in favor say aye. 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 Four, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. And then we use a first reading of policy number 606, textbooks and instructional materials and library materials. So moved. We don't need that. That's, that's just for the first reading of policy. <coughs> Item F is motion to approve policy number 406, public and private personnel data. Yes. So moved. Chair will support. Moved by Director McLaughlin, supported by Chair Berkledge. Any discussion? I have a question. On this policy, on item F, when it talks about what the definition of public information, it talks about a finalist, meaning an individual who's selected to be interviewed by the school board for the position. Maybe we don't have an answer right now. But does that, is it like literally the school board? Because we don't really get involved in interviewing unless it would be like the superintendent. And we have in the past with the business manager. Is it if they're a finalist that is interviewed by the hiring committee? And maybe we don't need to answer that now, but I think maybe just like clarification we should. I'm looking at the definition on page two. <coughs> and, I, and I don't want to, I, I, I mean, I could look into it further, but what I'm assuming here is that the board the board delegates, delegates that responsibility to myself and other administrators. So I would, that's assumed in that statement, right? It's the school board, you're, you're delegating that authority to the hiring committee. Well, every button that would be hiring of the superintendent, too, would be the right. committee right. for that. Right. And okay. those words are from the MSBA, right? <coughs> they are, yeah. Right. And I just want to make sure we're clear, just because we do so much hiring, that I want to make sure that it's clear to both the interviewees and the committee. Well, if something comes up, we can always address yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Four same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. And she has a motion to approve policy number 505, student discipline and appendix A, ISD number 701, giving school district discipline, discipline complaint form. So moved. Moved by Director Never, supported by Director Poulter. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Four, same sign. <coughs> motion carried. Thank you. And H has a motion to approve policy number 506, corporal punishment and prone restraint. Moved. Support. Moved by Director Poulter, supported by Director McLaughlin. Any discussion? Yeah, and I have a question, and Director Gavardi alluded to this. What came to mind is I'm hoping that at some point we can work with the city. I see they're advertising diligently for police. And if there's anything we can do to work with the city to try to get a second SRO back in our schools, I think that would be. They're so short, so short on staff right now. Maybe we could look at some help from like the Triple RV or something on an annual basis so we're not locked in or if we'll wait on, you know, for this year or something and, or, or some grant of some sort. There's a, there are several police grants that uh, would help with just something to look into anyway. So well, again, just to keep it on our radar screen, I mean, I think mm -hmm. that a second SRO really helped our school and our students in many ways. So if we can, our city and our school together, can ever get back to that point. I, I talked to Chief SD probably once every two weeks at least, and you know, every time I speak to him, I mention that. He's still at, the last time I asked, he's, he's still at the same spot where he's understaffed for patrol officers and just can't afford mm -hmm. to get somebody up here for the full day. Mm -hmm. So. But I'll, I'll continue to ask and continue. I think also coming out of the legislature here when they come back in February, I think this is going to get tweaked a little bit. So I think he's also kind of sitting back waiting to see what's going to happen there and what that language is going to look like. So, so has it continued where um, there's a patrol officer that maybe patrols more heavily around our school yes. at key times? And we have almost every morning um, we have an officer that's here at the front steps 
it's it's been almost a different officer, you know, three, four officers, different officers a week, but I, that's been awesome. Um, lunchtime, you know, there's there's a presence around the building, there's a presence at the Memorial Building parking lot. Um, but again, that's all dependent on what's going on in town. So one week we might have them every day, the next week they might not be here at all, just depending on what the circumstances are. But. And it does seem like it's the Lord Police Department and Chief SD have been doing a really nice job working collaboratively with our school. So I appreciate that. And all Officer Halverson does, he is in every building every day. He was here at the high school. It, it's just, again, that whole, that whole piece about when they can intervene and when they can intervene. They're still, they're still nervous about that. I don't think that's ever been truly settled where they feel comfortable. I still think it would be nice though to be updated. I know you and I have talked about that. And, you know, I think the last time it was updated was probably two months ago, a month and a half ago. And yeah. just to stay up to date with that. And again, I know this puts a lot on our principal and vice principal. Yeah. And, you know, whether it be hearing it from them or from you, but just kind of knowing where that's at because maybe there's going to be peaks, you know, where it's yeah. higher than what it's been or yep. like it started out really high then it seemed to get low and at a good point but that can change day to day and right. I know I'd like to be updated on that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And Keep um, it on the front burner. And I don't Mrs. Sakura did share with me um, she had, had she had a document that she was sharing with Chief SD um, that she's trying to clean up a little bit. So take some of the private stuff out of there and I, I will share that with you here all very soon. And if you'd like that in a public meeting, I can share that or I can send it out as an email. And the whole You're talking about like, like a presentation from the RSRO? No. Or what are you talking about? I'm just, exactly? you know, looking at, you know, how many incidents, the correctly. Incidents. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. like how average, how many a week we yeah. have, what are they, what, yeah. what kind of occurrences they are. So. Yeah, what the nature is of it. But I, she was working on cleaning that up and getting it for something that I can send out. But I'll, I will do that. But I'll also give an update at the next board meeting. Okay. I'll run through those and, and just um, not getting into specifics, right, right. but threat, theft, right. for example, or maybe trespassing. I can give some numbers on those types of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that'd be great. Okay, perfect. Have we ever looked at using a condensed HCC to help with different things or to come and be present? They have to put in so many volunteer hours, I know. And they I, don't know last year. I don't know where they're at. I, I, I don't know. Um, they were at the college now. They were here last year and some women is for, I, I don't remember exactly, but okay. they were here. Um, I think there was half a dozen that had to get 10 hours each. Yeah. I believe is what they had to get. But I think usually it occurs like in second semester. Okay. Correct? Like the I programming that they take, so. I don't think they're ready to be out yeah. here in the building in, in the fall. But So yeah. we usually try to get them when they're ready. Yeah. But I'll, I'll follow up on that. Too. I mean, that's even walking through the halls occasionally in their uniforms. Yes. Yep. Kind of has a good thing. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say I'm saying. Motion carries. Thank you. Good discussion. Why is a motion to approve policy number 617 credit for learning? Um, support. Moved by Director Nyberg, support by Director Mabatha. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carried. Thank you. Item 9, Rick, the discussion item. I, I don't have any other items for the board unless you have any questions of me. Are we going to have a discussion about the realignment? We certainly can. I, I mean, other than what I've already sent out, I, we haven't done much prep or planning since then. We, as an admin team, we're going to meet next Tuesday to try to put some more specifics to it, but other than what I've already sent, nothing's really changed from what we've already talked about. Keep us posted after every meeting, just the update. Well, the, the, informa the information I sent an email yes. to you and then I sent to the, out yes. to the district to that same information. Um, there hasn't really been any other updates since then. Okay. Well, it's one thing I could add to this, I mean, what? it's a big topic in the community. It's huge. People are like people are talking like crazy. Well, I say give an update as soon as we can and for the meetings because everybody's talking. Yeah, there's a lot of support for it. From what I'm there's a lot of support. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah. The other thing that might help is showing where we plan on saving money, yeah. cost versus savings. Right. 
and tra the transportation issue. Part of the savings. So. Have we worked that out, Alex? Have you ever sat down and looked at transportation and how we are going to save or what estimate or whatever? So we we are working with Mr. Watson. He's oh. just starting. We're still in negotiations. Oh yeah, that's his kind of his expertise. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. I think you know we talked about going out for a broader bid, and we're still kind of just getting started on that process too. So. Okay. And the other thing I just bring up, just for transparency, is the posting for the dean of students. Yes. Yes. So I just, internal posting. Yeah. I was going to ask a question around that. Um, is that mainly because of how we are going to realign, or is it because I mean we obviously had a principal and a vice principal there before. Yeah. But is Mr. Gabardi is he hanging in there okay right now, or is it is it? A struggle being the only one. I mean, it, it's very how are much we supporting him if he is struggling right now. You know, Miss, Mrs. Husko has has been there and been supporting him a couple of days a week. Uh, Brian Yertich again has kind of stepped up. Um, we have some some teachers within the building that are working on administrative licensure. I think that are also helping him out and supporting him. Um, but it, it is a struggle. I mean, there's you know, almost 700 students in that building. Yeah. Um, and that, and that customer service that we give to parents and to staff when there's an issue, it, when it, something doesn't get dealt with that day or doesn't get dealt with immediately, it just creates all kinds of other issues and problems for everybody involved. So to have somebody that replies to a teacher when they have a concern about a student or replies to a parent when they're in the office that day, um, it's hard to do with right. one person. So. I think he's struggling. He's he's getting by. He was, you know, he was hoping. He was excited about Christmas break. <laughs> to, to, um, but he's got a good attitude, and I think he's um, really got the support of his staff there too in his building. I think they're they're supportive of him. And um, this this again. I mean, I know I had talked with you prior when we made this switch when Mrs. McDonald took the director position when Chisholm added their contribution or continue to contribute more, um, not replacing Mickey Brown in that role. We're still under that threshold where we're about to break even by adding back a um, some support for Mr. Gabardi for the rest of the year. But this I would like to see going forward, especially if this restructure happens in the way that we're describing it, and seventh grade could potentially be in that building that we look at going back to an assistant principal, a full-time assistant principal for the fall would be my recommendation. At On top of having the dean of students? No, 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 no. no. The dean, this dean position would just be for the remainder of the year. We'd go back to the same administrative setup that we had prior to the, to the change. And can you just tell me what the difference is? Just, I actually don't know the difference between the dean of students and the vice principal, like vice principal. So the big thing that a dean can't do is a dean um, can't supervise staff, so they can't be in doing observations for staff. Um, they they can discipline, but you know those bigger discipline issues need the input of the head principal, need to be signed off by the head principal, the suspensions, the reentry meetings, those type of things. But the, the dean provides more of a day-to-day um, you know, -day support. Um, it's probably lower level disciplinary issues, more like detention type things or, or playground issues um, where I think the head principal would take the heavy hitter. When we're talking about suspensions or the reoccurring student issues that we have, that would be more of the head. This, this would be, you know, liaison with the teachers. Um, it, it, is, it is a bit of a compromise not having somebody with a principal's license in that role because there's some things that we can't do, but we've talked through all that, and Derek and I have talked through all that, and he's confident that he's fine for the rest of the school year, but he would really like to see, especially if this move happens, that um, we post for an assistant sometime over the summer and then find a qualified candidate over the summer. Well, what kind of education do they need, the dean students? They just have to have a teaching license. Oh, a teaching license. Just a teaching license. So is, do we think that one of our own teachers is going to apply for this? So our, our posting is internal right now. So it's, oh, it's just it's an internal. So we're thinking a teacher is probably going to end up getting this, which I'm means then what, a long-term sub in their classroom? Or? It just depends on what position they're coming from. 
Yeah. Well, if it's a teacher. If, it, if it's a teacher, yes. Then we have, have to fill that classroom. Yep. If For it's somebody that doesn't have kids in front of them all day, uh, some other oh. type of role, then we'd have to yeah. reevaluate it. But. Didn't we post, though, that we wanted somebody with administrative I, license I that, or yeah. working on yes, that's administrative what I was say to it did say that on there. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, technically, to, to be a dean of students, you don't have to have any administrative training whatsoever. So again, we would look, we have quite a few people in the district that are licensed principals that are that are working as teachers in the district. So I'm hoping one of them oh. will apply. This is what my hope so is. With, the, with the idea, with the idea, right. they become the assistant principal in the future. Correct. Is that the idea? Well, just thinking ahead. No, I, I would say that any this is, nothing is guaranteed. If whoever, is guaranteed. whoever takes this dean position, we would just start from scratch again and post and, and look for the most qualified applicant for an right. assistant. Right, but it would be valuable if they it, try absolutely. it for six months. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to go back to the realignment. I mean, as we know it, I, I think there's just a lot of buzz in the community, right? And like nothing has been finalized yet. But I think a lot of conversation and question come around like that whole definition of middle school. And as Chair Berkowitz said at the last meeting, there's no real hard and fast definition. Within our building structures and the numbers or the capacity, would there be any possible way to have like seventh and eighth grade? as part of the middle school or eighth grade included in the middle school or where, would our buildings not be configured that's what to I want handle to see. that? If you could take fourth grade out, I mean that to me that would be put them somewhere else. That's why I didn't make any comments to the from to the Tribune because I wanted to see from the administrative side the architectural and structure of the or not structure but how many you could have in a certain school, certain grades, and then the cost versus that. So once we see that, then we'll yeah. have better, yeah. then we'll be open for a lot of comments, I suppose, or suggestions yeah. in case somebody missed something. Yeah, that, you know, currently, um, the, way, the way that we had described, you know, a potential reconfiguration where the Washington would be a key uh, one building and the uh, uh, Green Haven would be a 2-3 building and the Lincoln would be uh, a 4-7 building. That fits. But we have enough space to do, to put any other um, student groups in any of those buildings would, would take some kind of construction or some kind of addition or mobile space or least least classroom space or something like that and that would defeat our whole purpose right i mean yeah. the, the idea here is you know the direction from from our, the board and our finance committee is we have to make reductions you know a minimum of a million dollars and I'm, I'm trying to do that as fairly and um, transparently as possible with our staff so the so they understand that we, yes, we have to make some cuts. Um, but I also am working on, an, on another angle, and I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you know, this can come to fruition. If we could provide some incentives for some of our more senior staff um, to retire early and then not replace those positions, that would be the best scenario because the those young teachers at the bottom that would potentially be non-renewed. We got some great young people here. We don't want to lose them. They're, they're great teachers. So um, not that we want to lose our teachers on the top end. That's not what I'm saying. But 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 if we could um, if we could potentially entice some people near the top that are close to retirement to go. Um, we wouldn't have to lay anybody off. I mean, I said, are we working on, because we were told we were going to see that, the enticement of the older, the to retire. I'm, I'm still working on it. I You're mean, still it, working it, on it. It's in statute. I, I have to, I, I have to make sure that I do it in a fair and equitable way, so I'm, I'm working yeah. through that. And the other thing would be, you know, I, I, again, I don't want any incentive, you know, it needs to make sense financially that 
that we're, that we're continuing to save money in the process. So. Right. So, so, so. Is there interest, do you think? I think there would be interest. I, th I think there is interest from staff. I mean, I, I don't know what um, what what's a, a fair incentive that would entice someone. I don't know. But that's what, I'm, that's what I'm kind of trying to work through and figure out. Are you talking to the teachers union about it at all? I'm meeting with uh, Ms. Lungenke tomorrow. Okay. You know, on a positive note, though, to all of this, and I feel like in the last couple of weeks I've talked to a lot of people for a lot of different reasons, but I really feel like so many people are committing our principals, our teachers, everything we have going on in all our schools. Mm -hmm. It just really, I mean, I appreciate everything, all the work that everybody's doing, and even on our consent agenda, to see a longtime teacher, a talented teacher, come back and, you know, be an academic interventionist, I mean, that's amazing. Amazing. So, I think a kudos to all our yeah. teachers and our, our principals. I will say, I love the idea of all the kindergarten teachers being in one place. Because that leads to good collaboration. All the students hopefully are going to get the same education versus having, um, I don't know, what is it, three, three or four classrooms at Washington, three or four at Green Haven. Now we have eight classrooms at the Washington. All the kindergartners are doing the same stuff. And being educated very similarly, you know, obviously teacher differences, yep. but you know the same curriculum, the same. It's a, it's going to be awesome. I think that's going to be a tremendous improvement. I love that idea. I mean, ch change is change is hard. I mean, yeah, that's it's it's not fun, and people people. I think it, it's a completely different conversation when you're talking about restructuring existing buildings than what happened here. 20 years ago when buildings were closing mm -hmm. and the controversy. This isn't about closing a building. This yeah. is just about reconfiguring who is in each building. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of discussion coming on. Yes. Yeah. It's there were, Before we approve it, we're going to be talking more probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then what about Boys and Girls Club? Is the plan to get it out of the Green Havens? Because we need that room for the second and third graders. So if this, if this worked out the way that we described it, um, in the email that I sent, um, the Boys and Girls Club would come here to the high school. The high school. Okay. That, that's our, that, yeah. our plan today. Okay. Which I think, I gotta be careful, but I know that there was conversation last summer about, about um, the hours of the Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. and I think at that time it would have been, there would be opportunity to keep it open longer at the high school, if that works out. So I think that the Boys and Girls Club staff is thrilled. Are they? Oh, yeah. they're thrilled if they could get classroom space and they're talking about other programming and mm -hmm. yeah, they're thrilled. And there's room here? But, well, if, if the seventh grade were to go oh, to the right, link yeah. and then get yeah, absolute room. Absolute room, room. yeah. Right. Perfect. So seventh grade is home yeah. Shop. Are those electives in seventh grade or is that an eighth grade electives? Seventh grade, I believe, has home ec, but not shop. Eighth graders have shop. And I'm sure you're taking that into consideration, or it's being talked about in this whole reconfiguration and how we would still accommodate that if the seventh grade was still there. Well, it, that'd be a discussion. I don't, I, I mean, so the, dip, the different look that it would be, I mean, for seventh graders at the Lincoln, is they wouldn't be on a bell schedule like in the high school. It would be more like a homeroom, right? You have a homeroom teacher, and then you have mm -hmm. a teacher you might go to for reading or a teacher you might go to for math. Um, we still have to provide prep time for that teacher, right? It might not necessarily be home ec, depending on if it could be more art or it could be more play ed. Or be more music. Um, it might not be home ec. So that's to be determined. Will all will the Lincoln be run as a in that way for the sixth grade and the fifth grade too, where you have the homeroom and then you go to your science teacher or your math teacher? Or well, they they do that. Sixth grade does that a little bit right now. Right. Um, they they've, they've gotten a little bit more where they're a contained classroom and they're doing more um, where one teacher is teaching 
the reading and one teacher's teaching the math, but they still do switch. Um, the, the trouble with the switching is it creates issues with providing um, specialist time. It just makes the schedule harder. So if we all taught a classroom and we just have our own kids all day and we're not switching, then we don't have to fight that schedule, right? So then it's easy, it's easy to get a prep time, it's easy to get figure in your lunch or figure in recess. Um, but I think Derek, Derek really would need to sit, work with his staff and come up with a plan that's best for that age group and best for those kids. What is, I think it's giving them some freedom and giving them some, some opportunity, but it's, it's more guided than it is currently here in the high school. It'd be more of a teacher-led experience than here. I, I see the seventh graders when they come and the bell rings and, and uh, there's just lots of confusion in seventh grade faces and lots of, you know, their hands are on each other, they're, they're um, because you don't always have a teacher over you saying, hey, no, keep your hands to yourself or, you know, um, they just get a little freedom and they go a little wild sometimes. So, um, so I think that'll be, you know, just for their, their, their intellectual ability, their maturity, their development to to create programming that is tailored to them, mm -hmm. rather than fitting what a high school needs to look like, a bell schedule needs to look like, it, it, it could be powerful. And maybe treat the sixth grade the same, possibly. Right, yes. right, yeah. Or, or, you know, we talked about maybe a wing, like a middle school wing. Maybe that's a, a sixth, seventh wing, yeah. you know, a little bit separate from the, <laughs> the fourth and fifth. But yeah. it's, it's still just, I mean, there's a lot of broad ideas. It's, you know, I wouldn't say anything set in stone yet. More to come. I like those words, like guided opportunity, like guided freedom. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right. Controlled freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, this is McDonald. Oh. Like to I, just, I just wanted to clarify one thing because we're actually doing a registration presentation tonight for 7th through 11th grade students for next year. Um, so 8th graders next year would get shop, art, facts, and FIA. So instead of having that facts piece in seventh grade, because they're going to be on the Lincoln, they'll get it in eighth grade. So they're not losing any programming, it's just shifting what it would look like. So in case anybody out there was wondering, you know, if there was concern about the facts or whatever, they're going to get that it would be in the eighth grade. How was that fit? How did you fit that in? What was taken, had to be taken out? Well, there was some other electives, I think, that were offered. Might have been. To eighth graders? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. They don't. They don't do Thank that. you for that. I would imagine with like seven followers. Well, that was really effective. Carrie, what time is the registration presentation? But right now, normally, you would have facts in seventh and eighth, correct? In um, all years? Seven. Some took. It, all kids would get it in seven. Uh, some kids take it as an extra elective in eight. Oh. Okay, so that elective is probably what had to be eliminated to fit. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. Okay, lots more discussion will fall in the months, I'm sure. That we do. Okay, Director Walter. Motion to adjourn. Without objection, it's 450 meetings adjourned. I'd like to thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you.